Hey guys and welcome to another episode. Today in this video I'm going to go and give you a rundown as to what's been happening with this girl. So if you guys have been staying up to date with my channel, you guys know that I wanted to do a giveaway for this car. But it didn't really go through as well as I'd planned. I sold a lot of tickets, but I, did not be, I wasn't able to sell all of them. So with that being said, I've already given out a refund to almost everyone. Um, I still need to update um, who I still need to refund. I know there have been people that have been sending me emails, and I will definitely get to you. But my email has been absolutely stupid and full with constant messages from you guys, and also random people, and whatever. But I'm just giving you guys a heads up. But one thing that you might have noticed, um, those aren't RPF ones. What are those? I got new shoes for the Accord. And I got to a little realization when I was actually looking for these wheels. So my initial game plan wasn't that I wanted to buy these. But these wheels, they came up, they were dirt cheap for whatever buddy was asking for them. They're straight, they came with wheels and tires, and I got them for a really good price. But the one thing that I came to notice was that well, at least with my Accord, and I noticed this a while ago, but haven't really mentioned it. I don't need 265 super sticky tires on my daily. So my daily, this is what I used to get from A to B. I don't need race car spec tires for it. Now, I definitely realized that, you know, I could use it for the street, but at the same time, with a tire that's sticky, it's, it's not useless, but it's kind of overkill. So I found these tires on my local classifieds and buddy that had these things had them on his G35. These are a set of 19 inch wheels, they're forged and they came with tires. They came with 245s all around. Now I paid a dirt cheap price for them. So I was looking on the classifieds what they're typically going for. I've seen these wheels go for 900 bucks without tires. I was somehow able to pick these things up for 550 rims and tires. So I was like, okay, that's sick. They're five by 100. And my initial game plan was to not put them on the Accord, but to put them on the 240 because the 240 needs wheels. I posted on Instagram a while ago well, not necessarily a while ago, but I posted on Instagram asking you guys, what would you guys like to see on this thing? Whether it be 18s, 17s, or even 19s. And I put two pictures, one with uh, those exact G35 wheels on this thing, and another set with 18-inch RPF1s on it. They both looked good, and well, I was like, you know what? I have 18-inch RPF1s, I don't have those, but they would work for both. So I was like, okay, so I bought them, I wanted to put them on here, but the way that this suspension is set up, at least the stock strut. So this right now is on stock suspension and I'll show you guys what my little issue was. So if we come into here, inside, I'm gonna get my camera to focus. See this? This is a part of the strut. So this strut is actually coming up and it's going over top of the tire. Since this is the stock size tire, wherever the heck it is, 205-55-R16. Um, because the 19 inch Ray's G35 forged wheels that I picked up came with 245s and the overall circumference was larger, it wouldn't clear inside here. So what I did was I put the stock wheels back on here, took the RPF1s off the Accord, and put these wheels on here. And I'm not going to lie, I really like the look of it. I miss 19s. Now the condition of them is not the worst. But I mean, they could use a little bit of love. So what I think I'm going to do, I'm not sure if I want to do this now, but I want to take these things off, eventually dismount the rubber, and powder coat them. But I'm kind of stuck on a color. I'm not sure if I want to go silver or if I want to go black. Because silver looks awesome, but I kind of want to black out my car. What do you guys think? Because right now, this is my daily, this is what I've been using to get me from A to B. And it looks killer. I, I really miss the 19s. But I mean, the tire compound on these is a little bit softer too. Or it's actually a little harder. So this is more of a realistic daily wheel setup. They're lighter. The tires are a little harder, which is nice. They're going to last me a little bit longer. But I mean, yeah, I got rid of the RPF ones. Well, not yet, but I have them dismounted from the car. So I have them removed from the car. I cleaned them up. I detailed them. I removed all of the brake dust. And I'm going to be posting these things up for sale. So you guys know how good a condition these things are. Look at this. Absolutely flawless. Zero curb rash, zero dings, and these tires come with them. They're 265s, super sticky. And well, what's gonna be nice about this is that the money that I'm gonna get from these wheels, there's the fourth one, the money that I'm gonna get for these wheels is gonna offset what I need to put into this car to get it running. So the other day I stayed up till about four o'clock in the morning looking up the common problems and what to basically expect when I open up the engine and get working on this thing. So what I did realize 
and actually kind of like discover was that the timing chain guide on this side of the motor is a notorious part for these things to go and like basically break on. So what I'm gonna have to do is buy a full rebuild kit for this thing. And well, I'm not quite sure what I wanna do with it yet because I haven't opened up um, the valve cover, I haven't taken it off. But what I wanna do, if it's really bad, is completely rebuild this motor. So what I'm gonna do is get forged pistons, potentially forged rods, new gaskets, new everything, and make this thing running better than new. So because I'm gonna be putting better and stronger internals inside this motor, once I put a bigger turbo on the car, the engine will be able to handle it. And what I'll be able to do at the end of the day is run easily, safely, 300 horse and 300 torque. That's kind of what I'm going for. Um, it's not gonna be a cheap route, but considering the motor isn't exactly running the greatest now and it needs to be rebuilt, I can take it apart, rebuild it, and make it absolutely bulletproof. So that's my game plan with this thing, but I've looked up the prices for it. A rebuild kit alone, not even forged pistons, forged rods, I'm looking at around two grand for that. Forged pistons are another 700 bucks American. Like, it's not going to be cheap, and I don't think that I'm gonna be able to have this car back on the road. So, well, at least not yet. What I'm planning on doing is having this thing Okay, don't hate me on this guy, but I want to have it ready for next spring. As shitty as that is, um, I think that's the route I'm going to have to go. Unless I find someone that's going to be able to sponsor me and help me do all this stuff and pay for all the parts, um, yeah, it's going to probably take till that long. But in the meantime, it looks awesome. It looks nice parked. Here she is. So I'm going to have to fix this thing probably over the course of the summer like that we still have now. And if I can get it working in time, I want to have it on the road because I have put so much money into this thing and have this thing in this state, but I haven't been able to enjoy it yet. So the wheels are going to offset that. That's my friend's transmission that we're rebuilding. Um, I'm going to be doing a video potentially about his car sometime down the road. But yeah, that's just the update with this car too because the RPF ones, once those are gone, that money's going to be put into this thing. Okay, now what about this thing? What's going on with this? Okay, so the way that I have this right now is um, I have the suspension almost completely sorted except for one thing, and that's coilovers. So in the rear, you're not gonna be able to see this, but I installed all new adjustable control arms. So I showed you guys in a previous video the control arms down in there that I did replace. And the control arms that I did replace were um, the toe arm in the back and that what's called traction arm up there. I installed new adjustable lower control arms and adjustable camber arms. So I'm gonna be able to go to an alignment shop, get the alignment completely dialed in, and in the meantime, I can drive this thing, have fun with it, drift it, and basically hoon the hell out of it. But I need to get coilovers, because once I get coils, I can not only lower the car, but I'm gonna have that problem sorted out in here. So the coilover is gonna go straight up instead of this bottom part of the shock body uh, come out over top of the wheel. And once I do that, I can run an oversized wheel and basically run different sets of wheels easily. So I can run the wheels that I have on there, I can potentially run the RPF ones if I decide to keep them or whatever for that matter. But that is what's going down. Moving back into the garage, this thing is gonna be getting a hell of a lot of work done to it. So in probably one of my next videos, I'm gonna take off the engine cover, look what's inside of here, not the engine cover, the valve cover. Um, take a look at what the hell is going on inside this motor because once I take that off, I can see how badly damaged this car is. Because it's not working nicely right now, it's got a misfire in cylinder four. What's gonna happen is that if the timing is skipped because the timing chain guide broke and went on me, that could be the result for why the car is not running that nice. If that's it, hopefully I don't have a bent valve um, and I can just do a timing chain fix and the car is going to be able to be running for this year. If it's not that, the whole motor's coming out. I'll be redoing the head, porting, polishing, and basically making this thing bulletproof. Um, yeah, that's, that's my two cents with the car. I really hope it's the easy part so I can enjoy it a little bit now, but it's definitely going to get built. So at the end of the day, even if it comes to it that it's broken and I need to build it, I'm basically going to bite the bullet and it's going to have to happen sooner or later. So I figure why not now? Um, but yeah, here's, uh, here's to Mini. You guys want to see something pretty sweet? So I posted up the wheels for sale less than six hours later. I found a buyer that wants to pay full asking price for them. And they're gone. Unfortunately, the grip for the Accord is gone. But if I really want to, I can put some sticky 19 inch tires 
on these lighter forged aluminum raised G35 wheels, but I'm content with them right now. Considering I spent, well, okay, the way that it's going is I'm losing $60 on the sale. I'm losing 60 bucks on the sale. So whatever I paid for them brand new, I used them for the entire summer season and I lost 60 bucks. That's not that bad of a deal. So I'm gonna head down to Grimsby, go meet up with the guy, sell these wheels and put that money back into the mini. Just decided to give you guys a heads up. I also forgot one little thing. So inside my garage, I need to clean up everything that I've got on the side because I'm gonna be taking everything apart for the mini. So before I do that, I wanna clean it up and there's a couple things that I have in there that are gonna be a hell of a lot of fun in a very close future video. So I'll just give you guys a hint right now. I bought alligator clips. I bought uh, $20 worth of wire, 14 gauge wire, and a battery. Let me know what you guys think I'm gonna be doing in the next video. Um, yeah, let me know in the description box. If you guys have any questions for this video, let me know, throw down in the comment section below, and I'd be more than happy to help. Okay guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.